This year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the National Trail System Act, providing responsible recreation opportunities for everyone. Remember to respect the trails and keep access open for generations to come. So enjoy the outdoors. And as always, when you're out and about, don't forget to tread lightly. Hello and welcome, everyone. Can you believe it? This is our sixth Southern Photo Drive Tech Net episode. On previous episodes, uh, we talked about recovery gear, suspensions, tires, and winches. Education continues to be one of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association's key focus areas, along with recreation and conservation. These technical episodes are examples of how we're trying to make it easy for you to learn. What we've done is we have created a new Southern Four Wheel Drive. TechNet webpage. Here's an example. You can find it from the normal Southern Four Wheel Drive website. On the webpage, uh, you've got an example of what our TechNet is. On, as you scroll down on that webpage, you'll find a link to all the previous episodes. Our introductory episode, recovery gear, pension, uh, tires are sexy. Then last week we did winches. We had Warren on board. They actually tore a winch apart and showed us the inside and explained how it works. We'll start posting uh, on that webpage what the next topic is going to be. And this whole technical series wouldn't be possible if it wasn't from our support from Dina Goodrich and Warren. Um, you guys know we'll be giving away a set of BFG tires this fall. Uh, all you got to do is enter a secret phase in the comments during this TechNet, and you'll be entered in. Here. Every TechNet that you watch has a different secret phase. So, so far, we've had five, six TechNets. If you've watched every one of them and commented properly, you've got six entries in the bucket so far. Okay? So, uh, I want to turn it over to Michael Morris right now. And let my what's up, Facebook world? Um, so thanks for joining us tonight for our uh, tech net with Southern Four Wheel Drive again. Uh, I'm super excited for tonight. This is I told you last week winching was my favorite, but this is right up there with winching and probably just as important um, when we talk about tread lightly. This is what keeps all of our trails open um, and this is where our future is right um, by adhering to the tread lightly principles that we're going to learn about tonight we know that we can keep our trails open keep access to the public lands but before we get into that series we've got just a couple of things to go over first off same as always tonight um questions if you have a question for uh danielle or myself or al Post it into the live stream, preface it with a cue in front of your question, and it'll show up for us, and we will answer them at the end of the stream. Uh, we'll have kind of a Q&A session there at the end. So make sure you do that if you have a good question tonight. Next on the docket, by commenting during the live stream, my favorite tread principle is blank. Whichever your favorite tread principle is, insert there, and your name, you will be put in the hat for this week's prize. Um, last week, uh, Troy Tumlin won the Warren accessory kit last week. Big round of applause. He got some pretty cool stuff in that kit, um, from Warren, some grab handles, uh, and a bunch of other cool recovery gear in that kit. So congratulations, Troy. Um, Al will get in touch with you and get that shipped out to you. So, so Mark, yes. How many tread principles are there? There are five tread <laughs> principles. He passed that test. I'm not going to ask you to name them right now because I think Daniel's going to tell us what they are. Nah, that's right. I don't want to. I don't want to steal Danielle's thunder. <laughs> all right. And remember, guys, the reason why we're all here, right, is for the BFG tires. Right. Pay attention during the show tonight, and you will be given the instructions for entering into the drawing to win the BFG tires this fall. So we're not giving it out at the beginning of the live stream. You're going to get that 
later on during the live stream. So you got to tune in and watch. So you got to be paying attention tonight. But if you're paying attention and you get the opportunity and you enter and follow the instructions correctly, you will be entered to win five BFG tires at Dixie Run is when the drawing will be held and you do not have to be present to win. So we all want BFG tires. We all want good traction on the trails and they just look cool. As Charlene says, they're sexy, right? So make sure that uh, you pay attention so that you get your opportunity to enter and win. And remember, you can also get another chance to win by going to www.sfwda.org and becoming a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. So you'll get a chance to win a set of tires and you're supporting an amazing association. So Mike, look what, look what we could win this week if they comment with that Tread Lightly principle. It's a spider web shade trail site. Sweet. So um, yeah, the Southern Four Wheel Drive spider web uh, trail sacks, if you guys don't have one, they're really cool. They've got uh, the little bungee cords. You can hang them right off the back tire of your Jeep. Or if you're like me, you don't have a Jeep, you hang it right outside the door to your RV slash home, right? Um, and that's where we throw all of our trash at. It's a nice mesh sack. It's got a nice coating on it so it doesn't absorb smells. Um, and it kind of lets anything uh, kind of sit there. It doesn't smell bad. And then you can just take it to the dumpster. So it's an easy way to carry trash or because it's open air, right? You can even store some recovery gear in there and keep it uh, from molding and mildewing. So enter for the chance to win that trail sack. You get some pretty cool colors, but I hear that uh, Al is pretty partial to orange. Yeah, we got three colors, and we'll let the winner choose the colors as long as they choose arm, orange. <laughs> <laughs> Very okay. cool. Uh, let's go to our – we're going to go now to uh, – we're going to introduce Danielle. I'm going to hide Mike here. Um, Danielle Fowler's McNiven is the, uh, the director, interim director of Tread Lightly. Danielle is going to uh, talk to us tonight about, about Tread Lightly. Uh, prior to tonight, all the TechNet sessions have been technical stuff. Tonight's more of a soft topic. Okay, we've got it. We're going to be testing a new technology right now. So what I'm going to do is ask you a question. How many of you enjoy getting outdoors in your off-road vehicle? I want you to raise your hand. Good. Okay. All, all but about three people raise their hands. Um, it's important if we want to enjoy our recovery gear, our winches, those big old tires, and that wonderful off-road vehicle that we have places to ride, y'all. So I'm going to turn this thing over to Danielle, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself first, and then she'll talk about tread lightly. Pay close attention. There's going to be a test at the end, too. And we'll, we'll do the test the same way we did that question just now. We'll ask you to raise your hand, depending on the question I ask, okay? Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Danielle Fowles McNiven. I, as Al said, I'm the interim executive director here at Tread Lightly. I'm really honored to have the opportunity to speak to you all tonight. So thanks so much to Al and Mike and Southern Four Wheel Drive for having me on. Um, I've known these gentlemen for a few years now, and they're both really good friends and great representatives of the Tread Lightly organization. So thanks so much. It's, it's really a, a great opportunity for us to talk to some people who maybe aren't that familiar with what Tread Lightly is and what we do. So I'm happy to have the opportunity to speak to you about it. So um, we can go ahead and move forward to the next slide, Al. So this is a little bit about me. I work uh, directly with our staff, agency personnel, enthusiast groups, and our industry partners to promote ethical education and stewardship projects on public lands. It's really important as we've talked about already, or has been mentioned already that we have to know how to behave when we're on public lands. We all have to share it, whether you're a motorized user or a non-motorized user. And oftentimes those people are the same, right? You may be going hunting, but you go in your four wheel drive vehicle. So there's a lot of crossover between different types of uh, recreation and recreationists and Tread Lightly really aims to educate all of those people to minimize conflict. Um, in my former life, I was actually the 
um, legislative assistant for the American Motorcyclist Association. And that's where I kind of cut my teeth on public lands issues. And one of the things that really stuck with me was the passion that the motorized community brought to public lands protection and conservation and how much it meant to them. And I talk about this in the classes that I've taught and through the Master Tread Trainer courses that it's so important that this is a way of life for people. It's how you experience, um, it's how you make memories with your family. It's how you build those relationships and, and look back on your life. And these are the, those are the moments when you're in, you know, camping or you're doing your four wheel drive activities or out hunting, whatever it is you're doing in the outdoors. Those are the moments you look back on in your life and, and remember fondly and the relationships that you built with maybe your grandfather or, or your grandkids. And so it's really that passion that caught my eye and grabbed my attention while I worked for the American Motorcyclist Association um, that made me want to continue on to this work. So I moved over to um, Tread Lightly. I've been here for five years and I've been really honored to, to represent such a wonderful organization that really has a meaning for people and the opportunity to give back and, and really be a part of people's lives and their culture. Uh, we can move ahead, Al, to the next slide. So I wanted to just give you a little bit of background on how I knew these, these gentlemen. Um, Al was actually in a Master Tread Trainer course that I taught in North Carolina. Um, you can see him there on the, on the right-hand side. He was a member of the class. So he's a Master Tread Trainer, very well-versed in the Tread principles and has been a great representative. He's represented uh, Southern Four Wheel Drive and tread lightly at a number of or uh, a number of events so we've been really happy to have his help in spreading the, the message and uh, educating people on how they can be responsible in public land and then on the next slide you'll see somebody that you know so this is you see the little red arrow in the corner over there that's mike um, i met mike for the first time before this actually for another master tread trainer course that i taught but this was at an event um, called BFG 36 Hours of Uari. What an amazing experience that was. This was the first year. Um, and so there's Mike in the field. This was the very first uh, group presentation that was being given that first year. So we all go back a little ways and, and I've been really happy to be able to meet these guys and, and be a part of their lives and become their friends. So what's the mission of Tread Lightly? The mission of Tread Lightly is to promote responsible outdoor recreation through ethics, education, and stewardship. And the goal is to reduce conflict and minimize environmental impact by improving the behavior of outdoor recreationists, not just motorized recreationists, but everyone. It's really important that people understand, you know, this is a community effort. We are all wanting to be in the same places a lot of the time. And what you'll see is a lot of the problems come from what we call user conflict. And being able to work through some of those issues, being able to build bridges between uh, recreation enthusiast groups is a really important piece of what Tread Lightly does. We want to be able to uh, communicate with equestrians, equestrian users, um, four-wheel drive enthusiasts, campers, hikers, mountain bikers. A lot of these people all use the same trails, and we have to find a way to cooperate and manage them all together. One of the things that I say when I'm teaching my courses is how important it is to build those relationships with agency personnel. Um, and one of the ways to do that, to show them that you're serious about conservation and really being a part of the solution is to build those relationships with other user groups and do the work that needs to be done that maybe the agency personnel can't do. So it's another function of what Tread Lightly does. We work with enthusiast groups and the agencies and industry. We bring all of those things together to try to get some really important work done on the ground. So here's the tread principles. This is really what it is at the heart of Tread Lightly. It's travel responsibly, respect the rights of others, educate yourself, avoid sensitive areas, and do your part. And we believe that if you follow these tread principles and you use this ethic, no matter what type of recreation you enjoy, that you will leave a place better than you found it, that you will learn how to be responsible when you're out there and how you can make sure that we're gonna be able to go back to these places um, in the future and what we can really do to leave a positive impact or a positive impression. Part of what the tread principles represent also is really being a good ambassador of your sport, no matter what it is. 
Um, so many people go into the outdoors now, and we all have to remember that with technology that's out there and cell phones and everybody's got a camera that there are eyes on you constantly. And so no matter what type of recreation you participate in, it's likely that somebody's going to see you doing what you're doing. And if you're doing it in a responsible way, no problems. But there have been a lot of instances in the past where people were unfortunately seen and caught and videoed doing things that maybe gave their community a black eye and it's happened across the spectrum. And so we really have to remember as part of the tread principles, do your part, be a good ambassador of your sport. I want to talk to you a little bit about the programs that Tread Lightly offers. And these are really the messages that we've built over the last 30 years to educate people about responsible use. So we'll go around the circle here. You'll see Tread Trainer. Tread Trainer is the national train the trainer program that Tread Lightly has. What we do is we train people to go out and train other people about the Tread Lightly ethic. Uh, this is a national program. We have volunteers all over the country, over 2,000 Tread Trainers nationwide and master Tread Trainers who go out and teach the Tread Lightly ethic. And they teach that ethic to agency personnel who may not be as familiar with our message. They teach it to Boy Scouts groups, they teach it to their enthusiast clubs, ATV clubs, Jeep clubs, um, even in elementary schools, you can integrate the, the curriculum into your classes. So this is a really important uh, piece of the work that Tread Lightly does, and it's very volunteer based. And if you're interested, of course, you can go to the website and I'll put that up at the end and you can learn a little bit more about the Tread Trainer program and how you can become a trainer. Uh, respected access is open access. This particular message was developed in cooperation with the Bureau of Land Management in Arizona. So what was happening is they were seeing a lot of use, high use, and a lot of impact on public shooting areas. And so they wanted to develop a message that would um, tell people, you know, remember that if you respect your access, your access will remain open. And so it was really built around the idea of shooting sports, um, and, a, and a message to remind people to not shoot at buildings, not shoot at the cactus, the saguaro cactus that are down there, making sure you're picking up your shells. And it's grown from there. And the point of this program and one of the things that we like to point out is that it's really based on focusing on the behavior and not a certain type of recreation group. So we didn't want a message that was going to demonize any individual group. There's a behavior that needs to be changed. And so we really wanted to focus on that behavior, whether it's um, litter, whether it's vandalism, and make sure that people understand, you know, if you're going on private land, respect that private landowner's property and ask for permission and those types of things. So that's where Respected Access came from. It's been a tremendously popular campaign, and it's very active in the Southwest, especially in Arizona. Our Restoration for Recreation program is a really unique program that Tread Lightly put together. And the core and the purpose of this program is to bring public and private money together and get important stewardship projects done. We've participated in stewardship projects all over the nation, and it has um, a, a wide variety of projects. So we've done trash cleanups, of course. We've built kiosks, installed signage. We've built bridges. Uh, and so what we do is we, we go to a land management agency, they identify a need. If there's a, you know, a, a, an area that needs a pit bathroom or there's some signage that's been destroyed or torn out or perhaps some guide rails that need to be put in, they identify that need. Then we can go to our private partners and say, there's this need, we need some, there's this need in the forest or on public land. We need some support from the industry for cash. And then we contact our volunteers on the public side and say, we've got this great project. We really want to bring people out. And everybody comes together and helps to get these projects done. And it's such an important program because with the way that land management is right now, unfortunately, there's just not enough personnel and there's not enough money to get this backlog maintenance taken care of. There's just no way that the federal government can cover it on their own. And so this is a really great way that the public and enthusiasts can put some sweat equity into the places that they love. And one thing that we've found is that when somebody gets their hands dirty on a trail, when they're out there actually performing work to restore an area, whether that means that they're putting in signage, they're cleaning it up, 
or they're improving a facility, they really start to feel an ownership of that area and they really want it to stay open. They just have this ownership and love it even more. And so it's a great way to build that community and help people to understand how important that work is and encourage other people to do it as well. And of course, if you're taking care of that area once, you're more likely to go back and make sure that it's clean and available the next time you go back. So it's a great program and it's one of our, I think, cornerstones of what we do. And it's a really great way to bring attention to all the great work that the off-road community does. And there's a lot. So um, we'll move on to right on designated routes. This message was developed with the Forest Service. And it's um, pretty clear that we just want to remind people it's important to stay on designated routes. Uh, when you go off trail, it can cause a number of problems, including erosion, trail braiding, um, a lot of problems that can happen, even right down to injury. People going off trail, getting themselves into a situation where maybe search and rescue has to come in that causes some major problems down the road. So the right on message was developed to encourage people to stay on designated routes in order to protect areas and protect themselves. And then this last program, Respect and Protect, is our newest message that was developed in cooperation with the Bureau of Land Management here in Utah. It's a very unique program in that it was developed to bring attention to looting and vandalism of archaeological, paleontological, and historical resources. These are what we call non-renewable resources. So once they're gone, they're gone. And there's nothing that we can do about that. And there's a piece of history that we lose. Um, one of the stories that I like to tell about this particular message is, you know, when we talk about land management and we talk about conservation, many times we're talking about it in terms of preserving it for the future generations and making sure people can go, go there in the future and enjoy it. With this particular message, it has a little bit of a different tilt to it. So um, unfortunately here in in the past, there's been some pretty serious looting problems that go on on public lands. And one of the situations that happened, there were families that were gathering up so much artifacts from the desert, from the Southwest desert, that they, when the agency people came in and actually took stock of all of the uh, artifacts that had been, been gathered up, what they realized is that there was a gap in the known history of that area because there was nothing left in the desert for anybody else to find. Everything was in somebody's storage shed. And so it actually took away from what we know about our past. So this particular message is really near and dear to my heart. It means a lot to me because it this is something that doesn't just affect our future, but it affects our past. And we can teach people how important it is to leave those artifacts, leave historical buildings, not shoot at them, um, so that those things can be there and we can discover more and other people can learn from the generations that have come before us and enjoyed these areas before we were here. So very unique program. Um, and all of these are really central and you'll see these messages um, throughout all of the Tread Lightly PSAs and, and our social media campaigns and everything that you see will be one of these messages. So to give you some highlights about what Tread Lightly does, um, last year we reached over 400,000 people just through the Tread Trainer program alone. That includes the Master Tread Trainer and Tread Trainer courses that we provide, but we also go out and we partner with events to become the official outdoor ethics sponsor. So we come in as a sponsor and you can see our messages and then that way people are being taught the tread principles and taught the tread ethic from the, from the point of view of the event. And we don't actually have to wait until somebody comes up to our, to our booth to talk to us. It's been a really effective program and something that we're really happy to see. Um, if you are a member of a club that has an event and you would be interested in partnering with Tread Lightly in order to promote responsible use, please let us know. You can contact me directly and we'll make sure to send out some materials, education materials and some goodies that you can give your attendees in order to promote responsible use on public lands. Um, along with our Tread Trainer program, we also run a free education poster program, which is actually going on right now. We get funding from the Right Rider Access Fund and through several different grants that we receive from the federal and state agencies. And we're able to provide posters for people to put up at their, educate, or their recreation areas so that they can 
bring attention to issues that are important to those specific places. So um, you can focus your message on OHV use, you can focus it on camping, and you can pick the tread principles and the points that you want to highlight. It's a very, very effective campaign. Again, we're able to, or, to offer it for free since we received those grants and that, um, that funding from a private source. And we're very, very thankful, of course, for our partners for providing that opportunity. So over 48 million people saw those posters just last year alone. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Yes. Look what I have. Look help. what I have. Oh, the poster. The poster. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, sure it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, it <laughs> is. Oh, it you is. Put it up in area. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Jerrica. No, no, no. I'm so glad you did. Jerrica Archibald, who's our communications manager, um, processes all of those orders and puts those together. They always turn out so great, of course. So thanks for showing an example. So for our other 2019 highlights, we had 11 stewardship projects last year that we coordinated with agencies and local um local groups to get those work that work done that I talked about before, uh, restoration for recreation. Through those 11 stewardship projects that we held nationwide, we had over 287 volunteers with over 2,600 volunteer hours, which equated to $66,779.18 of volunteer time. That kind of effort and that kind of contribution is invaluable to the work that we all do. Um, not only because of the support that it brings to our organization through the grants that we receive, obviously, but it's such a help and means makes such a difference to recreationists and land management uh, personnel in those areas because, again, it's work that they just would not be able to get done on their own at no fault of their own. There's just not the personnel. There's not the funding to get that kind of work done. So we're very, very proud of that. We removed over 11 tons of trash last year. And unfortunately, we have been set back a little bit, of course, as all of us have from the situation with COVID-19 this year. But we're happy to report that we are going to be able to get our first restoration pro project done by the end of July this year. And we're we're ecstatic that we actually get to get out there, get on the ground and actually do some work. Um, so we're really excited about that. But this is just last year. And so over the course of the last 30 years, Tread Lightly has performed thousands of hours of volunteer work with our volunteers and hundreds of projects across the United States to get that important work done. This is a review of the work that we, some of the work that we accomplished just in the, the last quarter. So you can see that we had um, a tremendous amount of education that occurred all throughout the country. There's only a few places where we didn't have people participate in one of our online courses. We had over 355 people participate in that way. We had five new tread trainers trained in two tread trainer courses, um, and those happened through our volunteer effort, the tread trainer program. You see the 30 million impressions um, from our website and billboard campaigns. And then the outreach that we attended 12 events in the last quarter. So that was January through March. And one of those events that we attended is King of the Hammers. So that's been a tremendous opportunity for us. And I want to publicly thank our partner there, Ultra 4 Racing. We have an opportunity to work with them to be the official outdoor ethics sponsor of that event. It's the second largest event held on public land and the largest motorized event held on public land. And, and the producer, um, Dave Cole, has just been a tremendous partner and provided us a lot of opportunity to get the Tread Lightly message out there. And I really have to say, this event is so indicative, I think, of what the motorized community really is. And what I mean by that is, uh, you would think that in an area like that, when there's a, a lot of rowdiness going on, people excited, people in an attending event, that after that event gets done, that that place might not look so great. But I have to tell you, with the amount of people that are out there, the people who are coming and going, crawling all over these rocks, being in that desert, it is really clean. It is really clean after these people leave. And it's just a testament to the way that we feel about public land and our access and the way that we treat it. So I, again, I want to thank publicly that event for having Tread Lightly be a part of it, but also the people who attend and be, being those good examples and being the good stewards that we need people to be so we can continue to have these kinds of opportunities.
Um, I want to take a little bit of time and just cover some basics here about how does Tread Lightly get this work done? It's going to feed into something towards the end. So the way Tread Lightly works is basically in, in three funding areas. We have government grants that we get from both the federal and state levels. We have industry partners and we have individual memberships. So how do all these things tie together? Well, just like any other nonprofit that is doing great work, there's hundreds of nonprofits that are doing amazing work, uh, especially in the, the public lands arena. We apply for grants from the government, be it the BLM or the U.S. Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife, um, state departments of natural resources. Um, we go and we, we present the project that we have uh, planned and ask for funding in that way. But the thing about government grants is that they're very restrictive. You can only apply for certain things, and once you get the okay, and once you are awarded those, that money, you can only spend it on those certain things. You can't really branch out into other areas. So that's where our industry partners and our membership come, come into play. Our industry support is so important. It's one of the reasons, actually, that Tread Lightly was founded. So 30 years ago, the U.S. Forest Service developed the Tread Lightly message in order to address motorized use on public land. It was in the 80s when motorized use was getting really popular. If you remember three-wheelers, which I do, they're very dangerous, but super, super fun. Uh, people were starting to use them a lot more often, and the Forest Service recognized we need to have a, a message to speak to these users so that they understand what responsible use should be. So they actually developed, the Forest Service actually developed the Tread Lightly message. And when they were approached by some industry, um, so by some industry members to have the message purchased, they realized that this could be something more, this could be something bigger. So they spun it into a nonprofit that happened in 1990. And we brought, um, with the founding of the, of the 501c3, we brought several um, industry partners on to participate with us. And that funding is critical to how we function because it allows us to not only keep the doors open to industry partners so that we have that line of communication, but it allows us to spend money on things that we may not be able to get government grants for. So for instance, there's not always government money available, but that doesn't mean that we're, there isn't work to do. So we can turn to our industry partners and ask for funding in order to support those projects. In addition to that, we also have individual memberships. So this is a way that people all over the nation can really take ownership and be a part of all of the solutions and messages that Tread Lightly provides by joining as an individual member at either the $25, $50, or $100 um, different levels. And as many of you know, one of the greatest benefits is if you join at the $100 members that $100 level, you get a membership benefit from Fiat Chrysler, which is 1% off factory invoice pricing on any, any new vehicle. So it's a, it's a really great benefit. There's, there's several other member benefits. We actually brought Garmin on this year. Um, they're participating in offering a member discount for their Overlander product. So if you aren't a Tread Lightly member, please consider joining. It, your money is very, very well spent. We're a very lean organization. Over 80 cents of every dollar that we receive in funding goes right back into the projects and the, and the messages that we develop. So it's very, very well spent and money is, um, unfortunately, it's just a key part of what all nonprofits have to deal with and so, you know, we're always looking to bring new members and new industry partners. So if you are interested in participating with Tread Lightly in this way and helping to get this work done and educate more people, please let us know. We're happy to work with you in any way that we can. So why is all of this important? What's going on that makes Tread Lightly even a thing that we need to pay attention to? In the me meetings that we've had with agency personnel just in the last few weeks, they've reported a 400% increase in visitors at popular recreation areas. They've said that on weekend after weekend, even during the pandemic, they've seen July 4th size crowds at areas. And it's, 
hard to manage that kind of visitorship. So things that are areas of concern are people going off trail, perhaps injuring themselves and having to call out the um, search and rescue efforts or um, just the damage that can occur. There's several places in the United States that have um, cryptobiotic soil, things that you need to be really, you know, invasive species that you can spread. There's a lot of reasons that staying on the trail is really important. And with a lot of people in the outdoors, especially crowding into these really popular areas, you see more and more people going off trail. Uh, on top of that, litter is always an issue. People leaving their garbage behind, dumping in the forests. Human waste has been a huge issue that, you know, that's not something that anybody wants to deal with while they're in the outdoors. But unfortunately, again, because there's been so many people going outside and a lot of facilities closed, there's, there's been an increase in human waste um, problems on public lands. Also user conflict. Again, we talked about this earlier. A lot of people in the same places doing different things with different interests can often breed conflict. And so Tread Lightly hopes to work with all of our partners to develop solutions. And the, the key thing is educating people about how their behavior impacts the areas where, where they are. So what you can imagine, um, if you're outdoor recreation has been growing over the past 10 years at an astounding pace. It's actually um, for the first time been measured in gross domestic, domestic product in the United States. It's over, it represents over 2% of the GDP of this country, outdoor recreation alone. So it's a tremendous part of our lives and our culture and what Americans do and all of the visitors and tourists that we bring in. So with all of those people coming in, enjoying these areas, which we want, of course, we want people outdoors. It's healthy. It's good for you. During this time, it's been a really important um, opportunity for people to have to go in the outdoors and maintain their physical and mental wellness. Um, but all of those people bring impacts with them and those impacts have to be addressed. So the Tread Lightly um, ethic and the Tread Lightly organization really works to educate people so that we can minimize those compact, or impacts, minimize conflict, and make sure that we can continue to keep our outdoor areas clean and open and available for future use. Okay. So what can you do as an enthusiast, as somebody who enjoys the outdoors? One of the things that I think everyone should um, consider is being an active member of a club. It doesn't seem Sometimes that that might be a big, a, a very big deal, but I can tell you that the community and the resources that can bring are invaluable because you're going to be learning from people who've been doing this for a long time, who know what they're doing, and you have the opportunity to learn from some real experts in their field. Southern Four Wheel Drive does a great, great job of educating its members. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for incorporating the Tread Lightly Ethic in what you do. Um, but being a part of it, an active member of a club and is, is so important because it gives you access to those experts. It gives you access to that education, but it also gives you opportunities to put sweat equity into those areas that you love. A lot of times um, clubs work directly with agency personnel to identify those needs and they need that help to get those volunteer projects done. So be a member of a club and participate that way. Volunteer for a stewardship project and you know, take ownership of those areas and teach other people what it means to be responsible stewards. Spread the word. There's a number of times when you're out on the trail where I'm sure each of you has seen some things that you're like, oh, maybe, maybe that person needs a little bit of coaching. You know, always approaching people with from a from a place of help, always wanting people to know that it's not confrontational. You're just there to help help them learn, help them get through a situation. Um, but spread the word about tread lightly. Teach people about what responsible use is. Become a tread trainer. Go through the tread trainer program, please. I would love to have you um, join the ranks of tread trainers. Mike and Al are both master tread trainers, so they can host a tread trainer course. And if you can't find a master tread trainer in your area, Tread Lightly staff will come out and provide a course to your club or your family or whoever it is that you would like to have go through the course. So become a tread trainer and learn how to teach other people about responsible use. This next one is really, really important. You see it more and more post responsibly. 
one of the best ways that you can communicate responsible use is by actually communicating responsible use. A lot of times we get questions from clubs and individuals about the things that they see on social media. Please be aware as a representative of your sport, whatever that sport might be. Again, there's always going to be eyes on you. And when somebody catches a glimpse of that and, and gets something that is positive or negative and posted online, it can have a huge impact, not just to you, but to your entire community. So please post responsibly. Make sure that the images that you're putting forth of your not just yourself, but of your club are responsible images and images that aren't going to bring issues or conflict to your sport. It's really important to be a good ambassador and just make sure that you're putting forth a positive image. We talked about this being a good example um, and what we call modeling appropriate behavior. It's so easy to be on the trail and, and kneel down and pick up a piece of trash and you'll find that as you do that, people are watching you and they will do the same using responsible winching techniques, um, making sure that you're using existing fire rings when they're available or even following the fire uh, restrictions to make sure that you're not having a fire when fire restrictions are high. Being a good example, uh, modeling good behavior is a great way to teach other people to do the right thing and be responsible. And then lastly, join Tread Lightly or donate to the organization. As I said before, your funds are not wasted. Uh, they go directly to educating people or restoring areas that need help. So you can visit our website at www.treadlightly.org and take a look at the resources that we have there, including our membership. So I wanna take just a minute as I talk about resources on our website. This is the new online course for youth and we've had a mascot since 2003. His name's Lightfoot, he's a squirrel that enjoys being in the outdoors and teaching people to be responsible so that we can keep his home protected and conserved for future use. This, um, we've redesigned Lightfoot to appeal to a broader audience and this entire course is brand new, funded in part by Right Rider Access Fund again and the Federal, Highways and Federal Highway Administration's Recreational Trails Program. Um, we've been very excited to finally get this off the ground. So if you have littles, if you have kids that are elementary school age, please go to our website and check out this course. It's great, it's animated, it's interactive. There's a quiz and you can fill out a certificate at the end that shows your, your completion of the course and, and give people a sense, kids a sense of completion and um, give them an award for learning about how to be responsible outdoors. You can visit the course at treadlightly.org, learn online courses. And so that's what I have for you tonight. Again, thank you so much to Mike and Al and Southern Four Wheel Drive Association for having me on, giving me the opportunity to speak to you all. Uh, BF Goodrich and Warren are both partners of Tread Lightly. So thanks, thanks to them for their support of this educational series. Oh, look, everybody's there. I can see Sarah. Oh my gosh. Hi, you guys. I haven't yeah. seen you for so long. <laughs> It's good to you see like you. You like how I get that, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> So thanks so much for having me on. Um, and I'm open for questions. Let me know how I can help. Please feel free to contact me directly at danielle at treadlightly.org. Happy to be a solution um, to any of the issues that you might be having out there. Out there. So thanks again. And let me know how I can help. Stay right there. Stay right there. there. We're going to have questions for you. For you. Okay. So, so um, um, I've got, I've got my smallest one right here. right here. This is my, this little, is my Michael. little Michael. He is seven. He is seven. This is, this is uh, my uh, oldest son, son Stephen. He's eleven. He's eleven. And this is my, this wife, is my Sarah. wife, Sarah. You don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but um, I, of course, I, I did this on purpose, right? Right. This is this the, the reason why we follow tread lightly, right? Our kids are what is, is the most important aspect. Being able to provide these public lands for our children further on down the road is what's so important. So that's where, you know, again, I did this on purpose, do it for the kids and 
if you get the kids involved, it's always easier to get the parents to follow behind. You out. They'll call you out every time. They will. <laughs> they're great. <laughs> they're great teachers. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, all right. Okay, so, so, Matt, so let's Matt, go let's for go. the questions and answers. All right. So I've got a couple of questions here. First one from Scott Pope. Danielle, have you considered a virtual or remote tread trainer program? I am so glad you asked. So actually, especially with everything that's happened in the last few months, the need for an online tread trainer course has become even more apparent. So it's something that we had been working on, uh, but not really focusing on over the last year. But it is definitely something that has been become a real need. And we feel that it's something that we really have to offer in order to take this program to the next level and offer it to a broader audience. So yes, we are working on a virtual tread trainer course. I'm not exactly sure when you can expect to see that completed, but I'm hoping that it will be done by this time next year. So a little bit of a wait, we're trying to get it sped up, but uh, we are developing one. So thank you very much for asking. Awesome. Awesome. The okay, next so one is, hey Mike. Yeah. On that same topic, uh, for those that are on the East Coast, and especially if they're members of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, uh, we've been traveling around uh, teaching the Tread Lightly trainer courses, the awareness course uh, or the trainer course. So if folks want to contact Daniel directly, contact me, contact Mike, we, we can help get something like that set up. So, uh, so just let us know, y'all, if you, if you want to do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the next question I've got is from Pam Dollar. How do we get one of those posters? How do you get one of the posters? Okay, so you'll need to go online um, and find, I don't have a direct link to it, I'm sorry, uh, but you can visit our Facebook page. There's an ad for the program on our Facebook page, um, Tread Lightly on, Fed, on Facebook. You can find that post, it'll take you to a Survey Monkey link that you'll fill out a survey that will ask you which types of recreation you want to highlight, which points you want to, or which tips you would like to include. And then we um, put those posters together for you. So go to the Facebook page and find the post. And if there's an opportunity, um, I can find that link from our communications manager and share it with Southern Four Wheel Drive. And perhaps they can um, send that announcement out for after the show awesome yeah well we can do that in the description of, of this this whole thing awesome all right all right so, so i've actually I've got actually a couple got of questions go. i think it's good information to share um so you have a rig or had a rig what was it <laughs> i have a 2006 lexus gx 470 yeah <laughs> Super capable vehicle, right? Um, the 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 Lexus, the Lexus is, is amazing. amazing. Um, um, it's similar it's to the similar like, to the, uh, Land Cruiser Prado from overseas. So super capable. My own vehicle, the King of the Hammers, this year, and we used it all over Johnson Valley. I actually filled the back of my the back of my truck with a huge tarp, and we were squashing gross, wet disgusting bags of trash into the back of my into the back of my vehicle so we could haul it all back to the to the tent and pull out all of the recyclables it was really really gross but the truck <laughs> did awesome the lockers were amazing it really really helped i had no problems it was it was awesome very cool very cool now now how many, how employees, many employees work for tread lightly that's a great question so we have seven full-time employees right now, and we have a contractor in Ohio. So all of the work that you see pumped out through our social media or our website or our projects or education, anything that you see come from Tread Lightly comes from eight hand, or 16 hands, eight people. So we get a tremendous amount of work done for a small organization, and it's, it's one of the things that I'm most proud of. Um, even when I first came to this organization from the American Motorcyclist Association, I was astounded at the amount of work 
that came out of this organization. And, and I'm proud to say that it, it's maintained that pace. So that's, that's, that's why that's volunteers why. are so important, right? Right. Yeah. We can't, we can't be everywhere, you know, as staff, um, there's only seven of us. We can't be everywhere all the time. There's no way for us to attend all the events and, you know, be in front of all of those people. So that's what we need volunteers for. Thank you for bringing that up, Mike, is because we just can't do it on our own. We have to have the help of the edu of the um, recreation community to get this message out. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that is the last questions that um, I have um, and the questions from all of our uh, <laughs> all of our uh, attendees tonight. But I can't thank you enough for what you guys do, um, for your help um, and for joining us tonight. Uh, definitely really great information to put out. Um, Al, do you have anything to add? Sir? Yeah, sir. Well, yeah, Daniel talked about membership to trade lightly. Uh, we always talk about membership of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, and we're 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 uh, we're suffering the pains of the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, like almost every organization, and we're we're putting an asserted effort toward membership. It's the only way we can uh, we can get a little bit of revenue right now. So if if you guys are listening, or you have a friend, or your club is not a member uh, of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. Go over to sfwda.org. That's sfwda.org. Click on the membership and, and take a look and uh, consider joining. We have a, a lot of not, not, we don't, Chrysler won't give us 1% off, but, uh, but we are, we do have other companies that are partnering with us that will give you percentages off if you're a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. And we have extended our tire offer too. So if you join before this fall, before the 1st of October, um, you will be entered to win a set of tires. So BFG has been very, very good to her. So I was saying, if you join Southern Four Wheel Drive Association as either a regular member or a premium member, uh, there are some benefits to doing that. One of which would be get registered to win a set of tires this, this fall. Uh, we're going to hold the drawing. Hold the drawing. At, uh, at our Dixie Run event, it's the first weekend of October. It's going to be at Wind Rock Park. Um, and you don't have to be president of Wind. And I'm going to put a little teaser out there for you guys. Next week's TechNet, uh, you, there, 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 there may be an opportunity to win a free pass to Dixie Run this year. Look at Mike. He said, oh, I'll win that. That. <laughs> And if you guys, and if you guys will, help me, will help me, we, we might even we, can we pressure might even Danielle to come out and spend some time with us. I would love to. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's been too long since I've been out there. I miss you guys. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so we'll, let, we'll, we'll, wrap, wrap, we'll wrap it up, Mike. Uh, um, if there's, um, if anybody has any additional questions, you can post them. I'll review this comments uh, in the next day or two, and we'll we'll reply back to the the comments on Facebook. Uh, don't forget, I'm on here. Let me scroll across the bottom of the screen one more time. That secret phrase to get you entered to win a set of tires, um, and our gift, our prize this week is that trail bike. It's about a sixty dollar value trail bike. Uh, I think you'll like it. So be sure to be sure to put the secret words over there in comments to win that. Uh, Mike, give us give us something else here at the end. Uh, tell us about Morrison Off Road Outdoor Adventures. So Morrison so Outdoor, Adventures, Outdoor Adventures. You're looking at my crew. Um, we are a full time RV family. We live in a in an RV full time and travel. Uh, currently, we are in North Carolina down at the coast, but we are leaving Sunday to head for Asheville, North Carolina. We do um, four-wheel drive training, outdoor skills training, uh, as well as provide outdoor adventures. Our goal is to reconnect families and individuals through the outdoors. Um, we all believe that the outdoors has a healing property, um, and we want everyone to experience that in a responsible way. So that's our goal. And a little teaser being dropped out there as things start opening up, we will be um, holding some classes. So just remember that we've done these tech nets, you know, they're an hour to an hour and a half long, but that's just a small piece, right? 
Um, a typical recovery class is a full day uh, that we put on, and some of our outdoor skills classes are full days. Um, so we, we will be releasing that uh, schedule here soon, um, and we'll be focused mainly on the East Coast here uh, for the next uh, month or so before we head out west. Very good. Very good. Danielle, thank you again. Uh, we'll continue to support Tread Lightly here on the East Coast. Uh, Mike and I will go out and do training. Uh, if you if you if you need us, just holler, okay? Do it. Yep. You guys are great. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay. Okay. With that, I think we'll say goodbye. Bye. 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 This year, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the National Trail System Act, providing responsible recreation opportunities for everyone. Remember to respect the trails and keep access open for generations to come. So enjoy the outdoors. And as always, when you're out and about, don't forget to tread lightly.